Hi guys, this time a little change. There is no whiteboard behind me and I'm not going to teach any of the system design. But instead, this time, this is a Saturday and I'm going to attend 16th Software Architects Meetup in here, Bangalore. This is the Silicon Valley of India, right? So a lot of things happens over here. Nevertheless, there are a lot of meetups happens at your place, maybe in Hyderabad, Kolkata, Delhi, everywhere. All you need to do is go to Meetup and then search for the software architects or any developers or coding uh, meetups and then do attend them. It keeps your enthusiasm up and it always helps you to achieve whatever you want to. Attending these kind of meetups helps me a lot. You know, you might be a developer or software architect or a tech lead or a solution architect. You get to know a lot of cool things happening around you. You know, a lot of people come over here and then they talk about new open source technology which they are using in their company. And also they are able to explain what is the scale at which they are running that particular piece of software. It helps uh, you to understand it better and also go back and then try or do experiment with that. And also the cool thing is you get to meet a lot of new people who are like-minded. And anytime you want to understand anything or talk to them or you want to you want to get some solutions or you want to understand something, you can just talk to them. And, and also it helps you to collaborate in your upcoming open source or any of the projects you want to work. Now, so far I have received so many questions uh, from my viewers and um, thanks to all of your interest. Today my channel reached about uh, 10,000 subscribers and I'm very thankful to you guys for all of the support. And what I do is this time, instead of answering all of these questions, uh, myself, I will talk to a lot of um, you know seasoned software architects or you know software developers or solution architects, and then I'll try to get answers uh, from them itself. And um, and once I attend the meetup, and in the end, I'll also tell you my review about uh, how I felt and what are the things I learned. <laughs> I know how difficult it is to get up on a Saturday morning. Uh, it's not a working day. What brings you to the meetup? Yeah, within the team in, in, in office, we will be really constrained with what we do. Uh, come and at least kind of event, we will definitely want to give a big picture. Yeah. Especially if system digital topics are something we need to learn from the people around in, in the industry, like how they are doing and how they are solving the problems we are also trying to solve. So I am working as a technology program manager. So uh, anything, whatever new technologies we are getting, if I can contribute that in my company or anywhere else. So just to get a bit of heck of the updates and all these things, I prefer to work in there. Uh, the title of the meetup itself is very interesting, talking about architecture. Architecture has always fascinated me. And uh, in particular, there are two talks, one on the front-end architecture, another on the distributed uh, SQL or back-end. These are the two things which you're bringing me here. So, hi, I am Chirag. I work for as a software engineer at Call Kiafid. So, what brings me here is like, uh, I'm always interested in scalable architectures. So, uh, I've been as in Kiafid work on a lot of microservices architecture and we always face problems in scaling and achieving uh, our performance goals. So I'm here to learn about more about scalable architectures and different technology stacks that we can use to solve our problem. So I started looking as to different uh, technology stack and then I zeroed in on uh, React. Mm -hmm. I think same technology same stack technology technology which uses, yeah. Yeah. So React in uh, frontend, Node.js in uh, backend, GraphQL and then uh, MongoDB, you know the favorite choice of yeah, uh, all yes. the startups. Yeah. So when I started reading a lot uh, about uh, this, right? So I've come to a level where you know I can understand how things uh, work. Yeah. But I had so many questions like you know, uh, what kind of data are you sending? Do you want to replace? You know, do you want to do server side rendering or send it to a uh, client and then let the client uh, you know do the work etc. So I was talking to Chirag, yeah. and then now I can understand. Okay, you don't do client side rendering because the data getting uh, saved and then you opening a javascript file and then replacing the string what if the guy who is using the phone is from uh, you know tired to city yes. his phone won't have uh, much ram yes. right so we will be like oh what is happening here so if you do server side rendering it's going to be very uh, seamless and then uh, very fast so, so I, I, I think you got the solution for, for the problem exactly. that you had from months uh, i am a person where i worked on varied technologies across for uh, uh, for 15 years so far 
and i definitely tell that every time uh, because the topics that are selected are from various backgrounds it always gave me something to take away uh, and it helped me uh, understand the entire uh, the industry how it is moving ahead my product and at an arch architecture level and definitely this helped me in my work area to contribute better as an architect so that's the reason i kept coming here and i seriously regret the initial 2 uh, years that i did not uh, come regularly hi everyone uh, my name is pravin and my hobbies are like i like traveling and trekking so i do like a stage in I don't have any uh, hobbies as such. Uh, since people didn't talk about them or some of some other like, hobbies, I try to develop something, but I don't know if I should do that. Okay. Okay. Take for example, I will have one whole container for my mobile app. Same thing, I will have an authentication component. Maybe mobile app, I also need to support <laughs> offline features. So I will have a local storage. These are complex inside your execution unit. That I will be a little complex on top of uh, uh, where my data is and that is what it is for them. And if I have to do a really query, I pretty much know the picture of this. These guys fall into it and I can solve it. So these are, say, uh, loads and then these are loads. Uh, In Promethea, the scrape interval is a 30 second or 20 second. You can define the body PR requirement, but then we have Promethea's. To get the medical micro service, but that micro service has an asynchronous job or any con job that is needed, which is taking less time than the demand to get the matrix from those jobs. So that's why that's why pull doesn't work because by the time Prometheus will scrape, the matrix are gone. So you can send it to Postgate and Prometheus will retrieve it from Postgate. So meet Anand Gote, who is the host of uh, Software Architectures Meetup in Bangalore, and he is the one who is doing it from about a couple of years back. So here is what he has to say about it. Yeah, I guess. Uh, so yeah, uh, we run a community called as Software Architects Bangalore. Uh, it is a group of people getting together and talking about software architecture. Uh, we have been doing this for almost four years now. So we meet every quarter, full day. Uh, we have speakers from the audience. They come and talk about their experiences. Uh, software is a continuously evolving field, so it, it's a good opportunity for us to learn from each other, uh, keep up to date. Yeah, so it's it's a great community. We have around five thousand people now in the community, and uh, every meetup is full house, yes. uh, and every meetup we are growing. So if you are in Bangalore, uh, drop by. We have this meetup uh, on weekend every three months. You can just uh, search for us uh, on Google Software Architects Bangalore. Yes. Uh, even if you guys want to uh, give any presentations or you want to talk about any technologies, uh, you can also. Uh, contact yeah, Anand just contact us. Yeah. We are always looking for new speakers. Uh, it's really exciting. Especially today's topics were very good. I really liked the microservice and how to track them, trace, and everything. That I really like that. Yeah, session. and we just had a talk about digital India, which is a bit uh, different for software architecture uh, meetup. But it's it's really interesting to know how people can can use technology stacks available in India to make applications for Indians. Exactly. Um, Anand is a very seasoned software architect who works uh, in the company called Devon, and here is what he has to say about how you guys can um, improve your skills about um, software architecture or design skills and everything. Um, so, do you have any tips and suggestions on how we can uh, improve our software architecture skills? Yeah, first step is all of course attend our meetup. There is so much you can learn at these events. You can go to your local meetups uh, and, and conferences. Those are uh, best places to start. Uh, I would also recommend a book called as Software Architecture for Developers uh, by Simon Brown. It, it really talks from a developer's perspective how you can grow into the role of software architecture. I found that really useful. Uh, apart from that, you have to keep practicing, keep try to design things, uh, try to see how other things are built. You can easily Google for uh, search for uh, software architecture of different applications that you use. You can look for architecture of Facebook, architecture of Twitter, uh, Flipkart, Amazon. So those are great, great learning uh, resources. And of course, there are a lot of online courses that we have. Yeah, as he mentioned, if you want to learn about system design or architecture, so you can check out in my channel. I have a breakdown of all of these system designs. 
Um, so apart from that, I have one more question uh, to you. Say, when you design something or when you architect some some requirement or a product, how do you make sure that your design is actually um, able to scale and be fault tolerant or whatever the aspect, like how do you test that? Yeah, it's a good question. So you have to first know what are the uh, properties that you're trying to build for. Right? So if uh, fault tolerance is a high priority, then you have to design for that. And the first step is to start is with a test. Right, so you can choose the technology, you can you can draw some diagrams, but the the final success only comes when it works. So I would I wouldn't say I don't I will say don't wait until you design everything, implement everything, and then test. You have to start with testing. Yes, I Even often, before you write any line of code, you should, you should first write a test. Exactly. How I'm going to verify this? Yes. There is a concept called as fitness tests in a book called as Evolutionary Architectures. Mm -hmm. I think we are going to also have a talk about that in our yeah. meetup. And uh, it's, it's something similar, but the general idea is always start with this. Okay, I always think that uh, system design or software architecture is a continuous process. You can't just, on a first day when you get the requirement, you can't build a very good system. You know, the first like design you build is almost always going to be incorrect or not completely accurate. So you will learn from your uh, test, you will learn from uh, speaking to your users. Yeah, you heard it you from want. you heard it from him that not always whatever you build it for the first time itself it will it might won't work. But it's always like trial and error or you um, understand about the system and keep uh, rework on it or keep building it progressively. Um, yeah, so you just have to make sure whatever you're building is loosely coupled, isolated, that way you can easily make changes. That, I guess that's the only thing you need to keep in mind. Yes. Uh, yep. Nice talking to you and then yeah. uh, I learned a lot today. I hope you guys also do the same. Um, next time I think go to meetup.com and then search for software architects. Uh, yeah, we are also on YouTube. You can look for us. All our previous talks are recorded and uh, it's up there. Yeah, those videos are also available if you are. If you, by unfortunately, if you can't attend the sessions, you can uh, always go to the channel and then watch those videos. Yeah. But I always prefer to uh, come over yeah, here come and over meet us. You get yeah. a nice lunch. The very good part, uh, the cool part is networking. You get to meet a lot of cool people over here, like software architect, architects or solution architects or a lot of tech leads or even senior software developers or MTS or anyone. You can talk to them, understand what they are trying to do. Yeah. Or if you have any problem, I have seen a lot of people there like um, talking to peers about I was trying to do this and how to do this or something. A lot of many people got some of solutions. Oh yeah, I could have done this way. Better. Yeah. So that's what you get it. And always um, it, these guys help you to uh, keep your motivations uh, always pumped up and then yeah. yeah, you can learn better. And it is a free meetup. There is no charge. Yes, so yes. spread the word. Hi, uh, my name is Lovind Krishna. Everybody refers to me as GK. I have worked with a lot of firms. I started programming nearly 30 years back. So I've been doing a lot of stuff. So yeah, I've got a lot of questions from my viewers. So right. they, they will keep sending me all of these questions. I was just waiting to collect all of them and then get answered with the masters like you. So if you want to give one suggestion for the upcoming software architectures, basically like um, the senior developers who want to become software architecture, maybe the tech leads who wants to become software architectures or solution architects. So what is the one thing you want to uh, suggest them, like how they should learn these skills? Yeah, so my, uh, I had a long session on this. Uh, my way of looking at it is, the difference between a developer and an architect is the difference between somebody who is looking at the functional requirements and somebody who is looking at the non-functional requirements. So all your life when you are a, a developer, you've been delivering functional requirements. Somebody has told you this is the requirements to deliver, uh, please make sure it's working, it's working correctly. So you're more worried about correctness than anything else. When you move to architecture, um, code is no longer in your control and you're not worried about correctness. You're more worried about non-functional things, right? So that's a big mindset change. So the decisions you have to do and the knowledge that you have are actually um, not very useful. When you're talking about non-functional requirements, how do you deliver it? 
then it becomes a lot of times a questions of experiments that you run and investigation that you do rather than code that you write so um, be, as a developer if you want to move to becoming an architect you should start paying more attention to the non functional requirements like scalability um, performance and things like that and what are the what are the aspects which are affecting this and you should have a clear idea that if i have to deliver this level of non functional requirements what are the aspects that i have to look into actually i'll send you a link uh, where i've covered what are the app aspects that a software architect has to look at i'll post that link on the description so sure. you guys can check that out in the video description so so when you uh, talking about non functional requirements so sometimes it comes to the place where there are so many technologies which solves a particular problem or maybe you want to suggest so now you don't know which one works better so as you mentioned uh, not it's it's about doing pocs and then try and error right so is there any specific methodology you follow to decide this is the technology i should go for um well one one is of course pocs one thing which uh, i think is very important is that when people are looking for technologies to solve problems they look for uh positive aspects in the sense what is a they look for what is a solution for this problem they do not do further investigation into what are the issues which come up when implementing exactly. the solution that's right? that's what it breaks the system that that's what breaks the system right so when you are um kind of doing any um investigation you should um focus just on the positive aspects of the technology so look at um, what are the problems other users are facing what are the problems other people have implemented to this are facing you just need to search for problems with that system that system of that technology basically yeah we want to have our system reliable and fault tolerant yeah maybe we we might have a lot of features with that but we want we don't want that system to break over yeah, longer yeah. right Exactly. for a, take a simple example right if you deciding to use mongodb look for problems with using mongodb yeah. right then then you get a more complete picture of the technology because everybody writes positive articles yes, exactly. nobody writes balanced articles so you have to separately search for negative articles yeah. so so do you have any specific suggestions of any website you actually refer to and or or any nice book which gives all of these kind of insights uh, so i i follow high scalability there's a site called high scalability i i am on that uh, all the time because uh, they are very interesting articles and it, it's a very good portal into architecture and tech but high scalability is absolutely the uh, site which i recommend for Okay. So I have last question for you. So basically, my viewers are mostly um, uh, who wants to crack some of the interviews. Uh, the questions which are mostly asked uh, based on uh, the system design, they ask like say design rubber, design um, like PayPal or something like that. Mm-hmm. So my question is, if you had taken interviews, mm-hmm. uh, if you come across asking these kind of questions like design this, mm-hmm. so. Uh, candidate start to do that mm-hmm. now you will be validating those that candidate right mm-hmm. so what are the key things you will look uh, and then when you judge them when good. they are designing the system so. yeah good good question so when somebody is designing a system i first see what all questions he has in the inner sense does it how because when you're doing design um, you need to know the constraints right if if, if they say uh for example design uber you may have a uh, your pick obviously you're not from uber if that and that person may not be from uber he's just using uber as an example which uh, everybody knows so the first thing is would you right now what you think are the constraints which is uh, placed on the system and articulate it these are the constraints so first anybody who is doing design if he is not articulating his uh, constraints then he is not doing design right the the first thing which uh, i look for is 
is he articulating the constraints so that it can be discussed and corrected? The second thing is once he knows what the constraints are, what are the options he looks at? So does he clearly, one of the ways of um, articulating options is what is called uh, plus minus and interesting, which is just look at the technology and say, okay, from what I know about this this way of doing things, uh, maybe um, say uh, uh, this particular design pattern that I want to do, these are the pluses, these are the minuses, and interesting is it's not a plus or a minus, but it is relevant for this discussion, right? So first understand the constraints and say if, if these are the constraints and I am looking at um, some patterns, some technology, clearly articulate the positives, the negatives and what is relevant, neither positive or uh, negative. For example, um, you may say something about how, um, for example, in today's system, um, what he chose was because I am using a Kubernetes system. And since this is this has a good integration with Kubernetes, we chose that, right? So this is neither a positive or a negative, but it's a relevant it point to that uh, particular problem. technology and problem, right? So if, if this approach is there, I take it uh, very positively rather than because you're not really designing um, Uber, you're, you're exactly. showing your approach, and this is what I look for. So how do you choose what kind of database to use, whether it's SQL or NoSQL when you're designing your systems? So there are advantages both kind of systems bring and it depends on what are our requirements. So SQL systems bring to us transactional and relational model support. NoSQL databases till recently were primarily targeted about scalability. So if scalability is the need, so generally people are going with NoSQL based databases and there are certain requirements where we need say relational model or asset transaction support. So those are the cases people are restricted to SQL based databases still recently. But in this decade what we are seeing that uh, research is trying to bring best from the both of the world and building new SQL databases where uh, I feel so something like CockroachDB is something to look at if requirements are for relational databases and scalability as well. It's, it's like getting best of the both worlds, like right. SQL and NoSQL. Yeah. It's kind of hybrid. Yeah. So I feel that selecting a database is an exercise and very specific to the use case. And people should really try to understand the internal of the database before picking up one, mm -hmm. whether it suits their requirement. Otherwise, a lot of the database logic would have to be implemented in application. So if you choose your database right, a lot of the other headache will be gone. Yes. Uh, so it's like even if you have a big system, maybe some component is uh, in which it's preferable to use SQL and in some other component it's preferable to use NoSQL or in maybe some other com component like the, gear, the talk you gave like about CockroachDB, maybe we can use that. It's, it's not like one DB for all yeah. overall system. It, might be broken down to a component, understand where to use what kind of database. Yeah, so interestingly, there is a website called DB Engines. DB Engines. So, so that ranks databases and uh, they have 200 databases which uh, they say are predominantly used in rank mm -hmm. accordingly and then they uh, publish monthly ranking as well. Oh, so, and so these are the 200, if you have 200 databases, so we have a lot of choices. And we have choices in terms of managed services and local systems as well. So whether I should deploy my own MySQL or should use RDS. Mm -hmm. So those are the other choices now. So whether we want a managed service or we want to manage our databases now. So so those are so choice becomes very, very difficult. We are spoiled for choices. Yeah. Just that so the idea is to know internals as much as before choosing something and stick with it. Because choosing a database is a very long term choice. So if you choose a database now, so you, that you will be sticking to it for the next decade of the life of the application. Migrating databases are very, very difficult.
As you guys heard from Anurag about how do you pick up the database, I think better you guys start reading about the internals of NADB before you choose that for your system design. Hi guys, I just finished the Software Architects Meetup and it was a great Saturday, you know, I basically used it really well. And there were a couple of um, sessions which are very good. I know one thing specifically is like uh, observability of uh, microservice where I got to know how you can trace the microservices, how can you log microservices and everything. And there were other couple of um, sessions about CockroachDB or, you know, distributed NoSQL database and those were really good. And I personally suggest you next time don't miss the meetups at your places uh, say in Bangalore if you're in Bangalore you can always catch this meetup or if you're in any other places you can log into meetup.com and then definitely you'll find something interesting and keep go attending these kind of sessions and it will definitely help you